Now at 5, outdoor dining is open in Indianapolis. We're live as the city takes another step forward in its reopening plan. As the majority of the state moves into phase three of reopening Indiana, gyms in Marion County still have to wait. I'm Stephanie Wade with Where Indy Stands. Nurses needed the shortage the state is facing and the program that could put you on the path to employment. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. Now at 5, we're open Indy. That's what Marion County restaurants can finally say today, but for in-person outdoor dining only. Good evening to you at 5 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins, practicing social distancing from my home. And I'm Amanda Starantino in the WRTV studio. The city has blocked off several streets to allow restaurants more room for outdoor seating. One of those is Mass Ave. RTV 6 is Megan Sanctorum is there right now. Megan, how's it looking? I know a lot of people are worried about a lot of crowds. What do you see? Yeah, they are. But over the last few hours or so, we've started to see more and more people come to Mass Ave. Right now, we're right in front of the Eagle. You can see their patio here is just about full. And other restaurants that have gated off areas outside their restaurant for outdoor seating are started starting to fill up as well. We spoke with several restaurant owners and managers today, and many say they're excited to be able to open back up to the public and serve people in person, something they haven't been able to do since mid-March. This opening does come with restrictions, though. Restaurants need an outdoor dining permit. They're allowed to operate at 50% capacity, and they're only allowed to seat groups of six or fewer. Many are also urging people to wear a mask when they can, and they're cleaning and sanitizing as much as possible. Earlier this week, we told you about a group of restaurant and business owners here on Mass Ave that opposed this plan to close the street, saying they would lose carryout parking spaces, and they're worried about large groups of people congregating outside the barriers. While some agree with them, others today are just glad to be back at work, saying they'll adapt and take every precaution they can. This is a very, very strange time in history, but you know, it, in this business, no matter what it is, we always have to adapt, always have to improvise, and and it's it's kind of it's kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of cool that we can we can pull together and do something like this and and make sure that our community is gonna thrive even in the weirdest times. So I'm excited. And we will have more from Mass Ave coming up tonight at 6. You'll hear from other restaurant owners and people dining out here for the first time since March. Reporting live, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. A lot of mixed reactions there. Thank you, Megan. Uh, Georgia Street, that's another downtown area that's blocked off to allow restaurants to spread out and expand their outdoor dining. It's closed between Illinois and Pennsylvania. The general manager of the District Tap said they're eager to get back to serving guests and not just doing carry out. The general manager says he and his staff plan to go overboard on sanitizing efforts to keep people safe. It's very important that we gain the trust of, uh, of, the, of the folks that are coming in uh, so that they can relax and not be too concerned about whether we're washing our hands and uh, if, if things are clean. So we have uh, paper menus, we have an online menu, um, we have everyone's going to be wearing their, their PPEs today. In addition to portions of Georgia and Mass Ave, Illinois Street will be closed from Georgia to Market Street. Also, the southern half of Monument Circle and Broad Ripple Avenue in Broad Ripple. The closures are expected to last until the July 4th weekend. It is a holiday weekend, so a lot of people want to get outdoors, whether it's dining or doing something else. Let's get our first check of the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. Hey, Kevin. And Mark, it's all about timing, and I'd call it perfect timing. Warmer temperatures and the weekend arriving at the same time. We did it. We hit the 70s today, 75 for the high in Indianapolis. We're down to 73 now, and you see the cumulus clouds. This is a view down in Bloomington over IU's campus where it's 77 degrees there. There are the clouds, no showers to talk about right now. We'll have plenty of opportunities, though, for showers and thunderstorms over the next seven days, daily chance. I'll get more into that in a second. There are the metro area temperatures low to mid 70s statewide. Look to the south. Evansville's at 78. We'll talk about our warmth and it's going to be sustained coming up.
Thanks, Kevin. Governor Holcomb says state agencies will have to trim their spending. He's telling most of them to cut spending by 15% to prepare for the loss of revenue due to COVID-19. Governor Holcomb announced the spending cuts today. They do not apply to K through 12th or higher education spending, though cuts to those may be coming later. Well, I think in the whole picture, it's going to be a combination of spending cuts. It's going to be a combination, in, including using our reserves, uh, and then also using the federal assist, assistance uh, to get uh, to the other side of this. The state will also not use about $400 million in planned spending on tra trails, maintenance projects, and capital projects at universities across Indiana. And now for the latest health numbers on the impact of coronavirus in Indiana. 27 more Hoosiers have died, and you can see from this graph that the numbers have been up and down all week. The deaths reported today occurred between May 6th and yesterday. Nearly 1,800 people have died statewide. And 493 more Hoosiers have tested positive for COVID-19. That brings the total to more than 30,400. The number of new reported cases remain fairly flat this week, except for two days. We've also seen coronavirus impact another number, and that is Hoosiers out of work. Today, another eye-opening number. Indiana's unemployment rate hit 16.9% for April. That's the first report to take into account a full month since business closures from the pandemic. That's the highest it's been since 1982 and higher than the national average. To give you some perspective about this, before the pandemic hit, the unemployment rate was around 3% in Indiana. Numbers like that makes our hiring Hoosiers commitment more important than ever these days. We are working to connect you to job opportunities and resources of all kinds. By the year 2025, Indiana will have a deficit of more than 20,000 registered nurses. That's according to the Bureau of Health Workforce. RTV6's Nicole Griffin is talking to a local nurse working on the front lines of the pandemic and her mother who is helping develop the nurses of the future. She's followed in my footsteps to a degree, but then gone off on her own path, which I think is wonderful. Mary Carney is the state director of nursing at WGU Indiana. Before taking the position, she most recently worked in the pediatric critical care unit at Peyton Manning Children's Hospital. Her daughter, Sarah, is also a nurse. I was in nursing school when she was born. I missed my nursing school pinning ceremony because I was in the hospital giving birth to her. It started from when I was really young and I was helping to take care of my grandfather. He was the first one that told me that I would be a good nurse. Sarah is working on her master's degree in nursing education at WGU while also working on the front lines of the pandemic at Ascension St. Vincent. It's been stressful and you have to make time to do things that you enjoy, things that refill you so that you can go out and take care of other people. There's a lot of nursing programs that meet the needs of the 18 year old right out of high school um, and plenty of programs for that. Our program works with older adults. My average student is 37 years old, has a full time job and is raising a family. WGU Indiana is an online university which also targets students living in rural areas that are underserved by higher education. Carney says it's critical for the future of health care in our state to get students enrolled in the nursing program. The average nurse in Indiana is almost 50 years old statistically average. We're looking at a wave of retirements. She says as experienced nurses continue to retire, there are not enough new graduates taking their place. Working for you, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. Well, information on how to apply is on the WGU Indiana website. During the pandemic, the director of nursing at WGU says not a lot has changed as students already take classes remotely. In the pre-licensing nursing program, they had a remote. They did have to remove students from clinicals for their own safety and to preserve PPE. Starting today, gyms around the state can reopen in the counties that have moved into stage three of the reopening plan. But Marion County is not one of them. RTV6's Stephanie Wade talked with operators of a gym in Indianapolis who have been preparing to open their doors for weeks but still have to wait a little bit longer. With Indiana appearing to be ahead of schedule,
schedule. Governor Holcomb announced we are moving into phase three of reopening the state. But for gyms in Marion, Cass, and Lake counties, they all still have to wait until June 1st. Well, our biggest priority is the safety of our members in the community. So we're just listening to what the governor and the mayor is going to say for when it's appropriate for gyms to open. Though fitness centers in the county's hardest hit by the coronavirus will have to wait to reopen, this time hasn't gone to waste. Here at CrossFit Naptown in Indianapolis, they have a professional cleaning crew that comes on a regular basis. Plus, they've rearranged their entire gym for when members can return. Once they arrive, we're going to have the doors wide open so that people don't have to touch handles as they're coming into the gym. Our coaches are going to be there with a no touch thermometer. The equipment that they're going to need for the class is going to be in the square as soon as they come in. So they don't need to touch anything. They don't need to be moving equipment or anything like that. Class based fitness centers feel they have more control over the environment versus traditional gyms because they can space out their members and reduce class sizes easier like they've done with these outline squares on the floor and garage doors that allow fresh air to flow throughout the gym. They want their members to take comfort in knowing they're taking every precaution so it's safe when they come back. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Thank you, Steph. And gyms and fitness centers still need to maintain social distancing and limit their class sizes according to the state's orders. As for the city of Indianapolis, officials tell us there will be an announcement next week with an update on Marion County health orders. Guidance on safety requirements will come from the health department. Still on the news at 5, making sure every young person in Indiana has the opportunity to sharpen their technical skills and learn to code. The free program available this summer. And I'm Dave First on the Friday of Memorial Day weekend at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. A little different feel this year, but the countdown is on to not one, but two very important weekends here at the Speedway. Coming up here at RTV6. And Dual Sportsbook, more ways to win. Coming up tonight, all new at 11, changes have been made at Tyson plants across the country after thousands of workers tested positive for COVID-19. The meat plant in Logansport closed for nearly two weeks because the virus was so widespread. Tonight at 11, Cornelius Hawker speaks with a Tyson executive who says the company wants workers and the community to know safety for everyone is its top priority. A Carroll County farmer and Purdue grad is working hard to help young people from rural areas get the technical Still, school, excuse me, technical tools and skills that could help them start their own business one day, and he's offering this for free. RTV6's Kelsey Anderson has details on this summer coding program. When you live in a small rural community, it can be hard to get education and experiences outside the general classroom. And for Neil Milet, he wants to make sure that kids from his community get to have more opportunities than he did growing up. And living in the rural community, obviously, your access to uh, people who are doing innovative things all over the world is sometimes limited to, you know, your hometown. Neil Milet has always wanted to be an inventor, but he didn't realize his potential and the endless possibilities until he got to college. When you live in a small town, you don't have those opportunities or those resources right at your doorstep like you do in college. That's why he created the Rural Innovation Network. So um, my passion for this project is to create uh, an ecosystem that's both uh, in person and virtual where we can bring people and resources together uh, to help folks realize their potential is truly great. Because of COVID-19, the Rural Innovation Network is going online and Milet is making it free to any child in Indiana. This summer we're starting off with two primary programs. The first one is the virtual coding. Participants will learn how to code from Purdue students and the other part of the program is a hefty inspirational speaker lineup. We've been part of the Rural Innovation Network from the beginning and I'd say our part mainly is to connect our our local employers and students with some really great resources that you wouldn't normally find in our small rural communities. Julia Leahy is with the Carroll County Chamber of Commerce. She says this network is a passion project for the community. So if there's ever been a time that a kid is interested in starting their own business or they've had this great idea and didn't know what to do with it. Milet believes where you live shouldn't determine who you become. They, they shouldn't have to um, determine 
their level of opportunity based on you know, who lives next door or if is the library open today. This free program starts on Monday and it's targeted to kids in third to 12th grade. For more information, go to ruralcoding.org. I'm Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. And today is the Friday before Memorial Day. Normally that means the Indianapolis Motor Speedway should look like this, packed with fans engaging in all the Carb Day activities, but not this year. It's a day that usually draws close to 70,000 people to the track, but as you can see, all is quiet. Pandemic concerns have postponed the fun until August. Sports Director Dave First on how drivers can't wait. The gates are closed, the stands are empty, the Yard of Bricks still look pretty good. This is not your usual Friday, a Memorial Day weekend at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Odd for fans, certainly. But imagine being a driver. One well, of the last two champions of the Indy 500 did what a lot of us have done the last couple of months. They hopped on Zoom. And both inspired by a couple of things. The fact the IndyCar Series will be at the Texas Motor Speedway in a couple of weeks. And the Indy 500, it's coming up in August. How bizarre is it to be sitting at home and what would have been carb day for yeah you. it it just totally doesn't feel like it like i haven't been keeping an eye on the date i didn't even realize that we're actually in may i didn't even know that because <laughs> it just doesn't feel like it just feels like the off season did you find yourself this week thinking uh, monday i would have been doing this tuesday would have been doing this yes um it really hit me on, on qualifying weekends um, i was missing something that's very dear to my heart is is that feeling of you know, putting everything on the line to go get um, to go get pole position. It's just the best feeling in racing. Absolutely looking forward to getting back in that car and getting things rolling because I think, you know, once you know, we've seen NASCAR do it and once IndyCar does it and a few of these other major sports do it, I think people will see that, oh, okay, it's safe to go out once they add fans and um, things will get rolling real quick. The idea is that Gasoline Alley will be filling up before you know it. If you're counting at home, just 43 days away from the first racing event weekend here at the Speedway. The GMR IndyCar Grand Prix on Saturday, July 4th in the Xfinity NASCAR Series race, and then the Brickyard 400 July 5th. Sign out front says back on track. Race cars will be soon enough here at the Speedway. Day first, RTV6 Sports. Thank you, David. Normally, this would be a time I'd be asking, Kevin, are we going to get the race in? But obviously, the pressure is off this time of the year for now. Kevin, are people going to be able to get outside this weekend? I think that's the bigger question. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And let me go ahead and answer that question just for practice, because I'll have to answer it in August when you say, are we going to get the race in? If the race were happening on Sunday, I think we would get it in. How about that for a positive spin on things? Well, as you look at the radar, you see the spin of the sweep arm. This will be a daily check of radar, especially in the afternoon for some showers and thunderstorms that pop up. The coverage will be spotty, but I do expect thunderstorms to pop up tomorrow, Sunday, and and Monday. Look at the temperature progression. We're warming up. We made it into the 70s today. We've only been to 80 degrees or warmer twice in the month of May. Every day in the seven day forecast has temperatures in the 80s. You'll notice the humidity. That starts to climb as we get to Sunday and it will be with us all of next week. There's your daily chance of thunderstorms at about 40%. Temperatures 80 in Bedford. Congratulations. You're the first to do that. You're leading into where we're headed tomorrow. Otherwise, temperatures all comfortably where they should be this time of year. Look at that. How are you doing, Sam? Tongue is out. That means it was warmer today. Jerry and Dixie, viewers here of WRTV News, we thank you for sending in Sam's picture. Happy to take you for a walk this evening. Temperatures will drop into the 60s. Tomorrow, there's a marginal or low risk. We could have a couple of strong to severe storms over the northern half of the state. We'll keep our eye on that. Probability of showers and thunderstorms is highest in that 2 to about 5 o'clock window in the morning tomorrow. Could be a couple of showers or thunderstorms in the southern portion of the state. Then we'll wait. Watch between 1 and 4. They start to blossom as we heat up. Sullivan to Greencastle and then Kokomo, Peru, Logansport, Delphi. Then it's 7 8 o'clock. We've still got some ongoing but isolated thunderstorms. Seven day planner, plan on temperatures in the 80s each day. Whereas we've been cloudy and cool and stuck in that pattern, now we'll be warm and humid. 
And the pattern includes daily chance of thunderstorms and the humidity to go with it. Although it's not officially summer, it will officially feel like summer. Keller. Keller and Keller. Welcome back. There may be no track activity at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but there will be thousands of cars there tomorrow. The track will be a drive through food distribution site for gleaners to help families in need during this pandemic. This is similar to the giveaway at the state fairgrounds last weekend. Gleaners expects to serve 5,000 families tomorrow, as they did last weekend. Each family will get a 30-pound box of fruits and vegetables, 5 pounds of beef, and 2 gallons of milk. You should enter off Gate 2 on 16th Street. It runs from 10 to 3. And the COVID-19 pandemic is impacting people who are building homes. We speak to a man who lost his job and his dream home. His message for you, that's coming up tonight at 6. And here's a live look outside from our Weather Now camera. We'll have your forecast and more news coming up on the News at 6. We'll see you then.